Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program, and we are live. Woo! <laughs> live from the Roger Smith Hotel on 47th and Lex, NYC. It is a huge day for many reasons. Today, Mark Sanchez was named the starting quarterback of the New York Jets. But even more important than that, there is somebody at this table who is the actual human being responsible for me being a New York Jets fan. And I'm not kidding. This is on the most epic of levels. My childhood friend, Mr. Eric Godfrey, is in the house. Eric is the friend that I met only days after moving to Edison, New Jersey in early 1982 when I was a six-year-old chap. And Eric's like, what's your favorite football team? And I was like, what's football? <laughs> and he was like, you're a Jets fan. And I became a Jets fan. Eric and his dad took me to my first Jets game and my first USFL game. We used to be hardcore USFL fans. Yankees too. Yankees too. I think so. Uh-huh. He's the man that's responsible for my favorite teams, Knicks. Yankees, and Jets. So he has a very, very special place in my heart, and I hope you let him into your hearts. <laughs> All right, now, we're also, actually, there's a very special guest to the right of him as well, a little Vendi TV action mot. I'm a guest today on his fabulous show, which we go around and we eat street food. We put a little wine. Daniel, say hello to the Vayner Nation. Hey, Vayner Nation, and mock me to like that. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what's so funny? I just watched as you said that because I knew Ma, you know, Ma gets very mad when anybody says for him to look it up. But Daniel has hung out at the wine library often. I think they have a little bit of Ma. You like Daniel. You like him. I saw you hug him before. <laughs> I should also mention this is the first episode ever in wine library TV history where Ma is wearing shorts. So I'm very excited on, on a very totally different level. All right. We are going to be talking about Italian wines today. Um, we've got a wine uh, from Tuscany. Uh, we've got a wine from Campania, and then we have a Moscato di Asti that I'm very excited about trying. A little bubbles, a little fruitiness, a little sugar action. Uh, so let's get into the wines. Mott, first wine, Rubio from San Polo, from Montalcino, where they make the beautiful Brunello wines. This wine rolls in at the unlucky number of $13 and is made from the Sangiovese grape. Jill, why don't you pour yourself some and pass it on. Um, Tuscan wines are interesting to me right now. Sangiovese grape, uh, I think at some level is interesting, uh, at some level is overrated, at some level underrated. It's just this kind of interesting varietal to me uh, because there's a lot of crap made out of Sangio, just terrible, appalling, awful Chiantis that hit the market. But then you get into the luscious Super Tuscans and you get into the great Brunellos, especially when you get a really great vintage. I, I think back to 90 Brunello as the vintage that really kind of made me a wine man. You know, a, a vintage that was so special. But there's this underlining kind of current of release point of like 10 to $20 blends or Sanjos coming out of uh, Tuscany lately. This is one of the real kind of standard ones from that that cloth, that $13, $15 price point for you know, a nice entry level Tuscan wine. Uh, this is the 07, 07 vintage. The 06 of this wine I thought was extremely good. I, was, I actually remember when I had it how upset I was that I didn't do it on Wine Library TV because I thought it was a substantially awesome uh, kind of Tuesday night pizza wine. Let's see what uh, we get here. Let's all collectively give this a sniffy sniff. Now let's get, let's get this into your nose. The sniffy sniff action from your end right there was unacceptable. I want, this to, <laughs> I want this directly against your face because not giving it the proper sniffy sniff is like missing out on so many of the nuances. Yes. Now, I think one of the things that we're picking up on the nose here is a little bit of like a chalk dust component, which I think is very, very obvious. Matt, you okay? Yeah. So you, I saw you squeezing your cheeks. No, I got no, nervous. No. You're sweating already? A um, little bit of a chalk dust component, a little bit black licorice. I get a little cherry. You guys pick, did you just drink the wine? <laughs> wow. Out of order. Out of order, my friend. Um, anybody picking up anything else? Lol, anything on the nose? Raspberry. Yeah. A little raspberry. A little bit of heat. Yeah, I get a little heat on the nose as well. 
Yeah, I think there is a kind of a floral component. There's something a little bit of lilac. I mean, the thing that's really in my face is that dust. Like that chalky dustiness is really obvious. All right. Maybe a little bit of that. Let's give this a whirl. Let's go. What should do you guys we all think? taste it like you taste it, kind of in and out like that? You know, I, I feel like everybody should do whatever the heck they want to do, but that okay. being said, the more you can cover your palate, the more your taste buds are gonna be in play, the more nuances you're definitely gonna pick up. What are you guys uh, getting on this wine? Jill? I get spicy. A spicy component? Yeah. And do you like that or is that? I do, I okay. do like it. Plus, sour cherry. Sour cherry, agreed. A pretty dry. Yeah, dry in the back end. Yep, yeah. low. Those dusty, dry end, back of the end tannins, a lot of red fruit, um, sort of cherry, raspberry. Yep. I gotta say spiciness as well. You're getting that Absolutely. spiciness. Yeah. And, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm being a pass with seven Z's. <laughs> just not into it. It's just kind of like Godfrey? Uh, good dark fruit. Um, I pick up a little of the black pepper. Decent fish. What do you think? Chocolatey, tanny kind of a little bit. I get the chocolate. I almost get almost like if you were to take dark chocolate and shred it down into like almost a dust, right? So that there, I really, I think the nose to the palate transcends. I get that chalkiness even on the mouth feel. I agree with the sour cherry quite a bit. I get a, get out of here. <laughs> How are you, my friend? <laughs> How, long time, long time friend of mine, long time. This man right here, Yes, when I was 14. 14 bought 90 Dominus for me. Mr. Ben, it's good to see you. How are you? Good, it's good to see you. Great to see you. Mind you, Ben, unbelievable. Um, I haven't seen that guy in a long, long time. Um, I sold him the first case of Dominus I ever sold just a long time ago. I think it was like 15. Um, sour cherry, good creaminess, a little chalk dust, uh, I think this wine is showing fairly well. I, I think it's well made. Um, it's a, maybe a little cre too creamy for me on the back end, but not too bad. I like the body. I think it's got substantial body to it. Um, I do feel a little heat on the back end, but not too bad. It's also a little warm in here. Um, I, I think this is pretty solid wine. For $13, I'm not upset in any shape. I don't think it has enormous um, complexities on the back end. I think really around in the mid palate it starts kind of losing some of its excitement. But it's nice. I mean this is an 87, 88 point wine. Not bad at all. Perfect for like Wednesday night pizza. Um, and not a bad start at all. I'm actually I think the Rubio is pretty okay. I, I, I'm trying to remember how I compare it to the 06. I think it, it might, I think it just tends to be in the same range. Maybe the 06 had a little bit more going for it. But um, not bad. How much? What, I mean it's a $13 wine. So not bad. What do you guys think? Yeah. What do you attribute the chalk dust, uh, smell and taste to? A lot of uh, San Giovese, a lot from the terroir, the clay soil, the soils in, in the ground from where it's really coming. It's picking up all that stuff. I mean, when you pick up eucalyptus, that means probably 500 years ago there was eucalyptus, you know, planted there. So I mean, you get so much from the terroir, uh, dustiness a lot from the land. Absolutely. Um, now we're going to Aglianico. How many of you here at the table have had an Aglianico? Raise your hand. All right, two, good. So we're expanding palettes, that excites me. Jill, pour and pass. Um, Aglianico, uh, a great varietal from Campania. Uh, I think, oh, uh, Mott, I'm sorry. Can you pass that back to me? Mott, I'm, I'm getting distracted by all these human <laughs> beings. Um, this is, thank you, Mott, Di Maggio 2005 uh, Canto Aglianico. This wine rolls in at 12 US dollars. All right. Um, Aglianico is kind of one of those varietals that is still dramatically under the radar. Uh, the far majority of people that drink wine have never even heard of it, let alone tried it. Um, the price points are extremely attractive. Again, wines that really hit that 11 to $20 price point um, and tend to be over delivering for the quality. Again, I'm begging you, the people watching, all the people outside, stop drinking Chianti and all the same bull crap when you've got wines like this from you know, you know, Campania that are over delivering and because there's no demand, you can still get wines like this for 12 bones. I promise you, if the wine spectator in Parker decided to get hot 
on these wines, given the quality output, these wines could easily start pushing that $25, $30, $40 price range. We've seen it happen in many places in the world. Zins come to mind, California Syrah comes to mind, the Northern Rhone comes to mind. So, are we gonna make it with wine? Got enough? All right. Um, So, please take advantage of the lack of knowledge of the American wine drinker right now and realize, write the name down, Aglianico, go out to your store, find some, I think you're gonna be quite, quite happy. All right, let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. (laughs) Cheers, bro. Now this has a very distinct nose, totally different than the last wine. This is really one of those wines with, where the bouquet, the nose, is gonna be controversial, right? People are gonna love it or hate it. As we go around this table, I'm sure we're gonna have opinions. It's not gonna be like, hmm, you know, what do you think of the nose? <laughs> Wait, I just said nobody would go, hmm, you don't love it. Yeah. That's it. Remember, I did not make this, no emotional attachment. None. Okay. Uh, smells vegetal. Vegetal, okay. Getting a lot of sour smell. Oh, the more I swirl it around, smell it again, uh, it's less sour though. Okay. I don't know if I'm just used to this one. Then. Okay. Low? It's a lot bigger than the last one. I really like the way it smells in the nose. You like this nose? I love the nose. Do you find it extremely floral? Yeah. Because I find it ridiculously floral. Yes. It's a I, I think it's bad and body works. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, that's what I thought. I thought like I went to the dollar store and bought my mom cheap potpourri. You know, it's just like, it's, it's very aromatic. What do you got over here? I definitely like it compared to the Rubio. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm still drinking to see how it goes. Okay. Daniel? It smells like I had some mechanics clothing rotting in the back of my car. Yeah. Mechanics yeah. clothing rotting. Like, like <laughs> gasoline. Okay. Like. So you get a, a kind of a motor oil kind of, you know, car thing. Eric? Definitely picking up on the floral aspects. Redder fruit on this line. I'm rather biased to four, I guess. Yeah. You're a fan. Big, big, okay. Big, Dirty, stinky mushrooms, straight out of the earth. And? Do, and do you like that or? Um, kind of dig it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I don't know if I pick up the mushroom aspect as much, but I definitely pick up this topsoil component on the nose. I mean, it really does feel like we just planted a boatload <laughs> of flowers. That's what really comes through on this. There's also a distinct, to me, kind of pomegranate red fruit thing going on on the nose that's kind of obvious to me. Growing up in a Russian household, we ate pomegranates back in Edison in the 80s when we had no yeah, idea what they were. But we're like, Eric, eat it. Like, what is this? Nobody knew what pomegranates were in 1984. So, let's give this a whirl. Gallery? I like it. You like it? No, so the yeah. nose, not so much, but yeah, the flavor profile. Definitely. Why? Smooth? Yeah, very smooth. Okay. Dry mm-hmm. Yeah. It's and is that good for you or bad for you? No, I like it. It's okay. Different. Okay. Smooth, I thought a lot of different than smell. So you like the flavor more than the smell? More than the smell. Okay. Low? Nice, medium to full body. Great, big tannins. I mean, no one loves tannins more than I do. And this yeah, you're a huge Batista Rock fan. And? And I love the tannins on this. It's uh, you need some meat with this to go a little better with that. But it's I enjoy it. Are, are you a fan of this wine? Yeah. And considering it's a twelve dollar wine, yeah, yeah, you can wrap your head around it. I, I like the bridal. I got the the Covid when you guys yes. when you did that, and that's what got me into Aliana in the first it. place. So nice, I'm a big fan of the grape. Awesome. I definitely see the tannins as well. And real dryness it takes them off as soon as you drink it. Yeah. You like it? Cool. cool. Daniel? I love it in my mouth, but I really dislike the finish. So I think that just means no, you no, perpetually no, drink it. No, that's good. I mean, listen, I, I understand that. I, I was actually saying, you're stealing my thunder. Um, <laughs> the only negative thing I can really say about this wine is I thought the finish actually fell off a little bit. I thought it really covered my mouth in the mid palate. I just thought the finish kind of shoot. Full body smooth for 12 bones. Yeah. Feel good. So the one thing that I pick up heavily on this wine is I think there's a, a substantial dried tobacco flavor on this wine. Um, I think if you retaste it, unless you're a lush like Eric and pounded it already. Um, <laughs> don't want a bad rep. Um, so I get really like crushed rose petals meets tobacco um, on the flavor profile, which I like. I agree, I think the mid palate is the star of this wine. I also agree with a couple comments over here that I don't know if the finish, 
I don't. I wouldn't say for me it's a cliff wine, but definitely it softens up on the finish. Though I do believe that that's what some of the people like because that kind of makes it soft and smooth. Um, this is a really, really good cheese wine. I mean, if you're just into simplistic hard cheese and you want to pair a wine with with that, I, I promise you, going out and finding an Aglianico like this will really do it a, a lot of justice. And, and I'm pretty impressed with this wine. Again. This is a very strong showing. Once again, I think that there is a, an interesting dichotomy going on with Italian red wines. I think a, a lot of people overrate them, like Italian wines, the best. And then there's a lot of people that kind of underrate them. I think the new wave wine drinker, because we've been hit with the Argentinian Malbec, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, South African Pinotage, Petite Syrah, different things. There's been so many new things to the table over the last decade. And even myself, I find myself kind of discrediting or not paying as much attention to Italian wines, especially in that 10 to $15 range. And this kind of little micro two wine tasting reminds me, you know what? They still know how to make pretty damn good wine in Italy. And this was another good showing, again, for my palate, an 88 point wine, which again, at $12 is very fair. We're not talking about, you know, garbage wine, which you get so much. I mean, we're talking about 70 to 80% of the wine out there at 12 bucks is disgusting. It makes me vomit in my mouth. So you're talking about two back-to-back wines from Italy that I think show a lot of flavor. Very different, but I think service a lot of different palates. And I think the next wine I'm very excited about. Now, I also know that most people don't drink sparkling wine or wine with bubbles at room temperature, so it'll be fun for me to see what you guys think of that. Um, but. Uh, what we have here, Mott, is the Johnny Doglia 2007 Moscato di Asti. Um, and uh, I'm very excited about this wine. This is uh, a wine that, uh, let me just give each of you a little bit, make it a little quicker, a little rinsey. Uh, this is a wine that I've always liked because a couple different reasons. The ladies like it, so that was important at a certain part of my career. Yeah. <laughs> Less important right. now, but, but for Lizzie. We gotta give Lizzie, and now little Misha. We'll, we'll serve her a little in her bottle. Um, but also, more importantly, this is a uh, sparkling wine that, um, that is very well priced. You can get Moscato di Asti usually in the 15 to $20 price range. Um, and, pour and pass. And, pairs with an enormous amount of foods. I am of the belief, and many of you have heard me say this, that we do not consume enough sparkling wine in the US, and the fact that we treat it solely as a celebratory beverage pisses me off. I'm shocked that people that consume lobster and oysters, shellfish, salads, things of this nature, are not pairing more sparkling wine with their day-to-day consumption. And if you are eating even pasta, a Moscato di Asti could be a tremendous, especially with white sauce, a tremendous friend. Sexy right. name. It is a sexy name. Moscato di Asti. Yeah. All right, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Now you this don't really do that with sparkling wine, right? I do. Do you? I do. Yeah. But, but a lot of people don't. Is Usually it's a thinner. Just... You know, I'm not really quite sure what etiquette is, you know, at all. But, I mean, <laughs> I mean at some level, I, it's just so natural for me to do it. Uh, plus, Moscato Biasi tends to be poured in, in a regular glass more often than uh, traditional sparkling wine from Champagne. But this wine's gonna win a lot of fans over on its nose. Daniel, you like it? You like the fruitiness. You know those little uh, jelly lychee candies from Asian uh. markets? <laughs> like that and peach. So, so honestly, that is a tremendous job because the two flavors on this wine are lychee fruit and peach. Wow. 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 And, and really lychee. Have you guys had lychee? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's imperative to have lychee fruit if you consume wine because it shows up in so many places. I, I agree. This has just a heavy uh, flavoring uh, on the nose of those two. Anybody picking anything else up? Almost like white, white peaches, some right? Orange peel or something. I'm Super up some tropical. Type, I'm, I'm picking up some type of I'm mango, papaya. papaya you know what's funny about this? It's kind of like the Skittles, but not the one in the red pack. In the white blue in pack. Absolutely. It's like tropical Skittles. You left them in your car on a hundred degree day, and so like it, they all melted down, and like it opened the plastic, and you could smell it. That's what this smells like. Totally. Thank you. Let's give it a whirl. It's green. <laughs> Loud. 
like the room. This is like hard to spit. Now it tastes like Skittles. It's too sweet. <laughs> you know? It's too sweet for Way too sweet. Doesn't have any acidity in terms of sugar. No. I totally agree with Lowell. Um, what do you think? I, I think it is really sweet, but I also think that it's warm. And I feel as if, yep. if it was not as warm, it might be a little. Yeah, I think that's a very valid point. Joe? I like that. I agree with Daniel. It's a little warm, but I think it's good down to really, really. You like the sugar? I do. You like the sweetness? Yeah. Okay. Too sweet. It's got to be I don't know what you would pair it with. Uh, it's just too yeah. sweet. I, I don't know what to eat with. Yes, candy. You know, it's actually yeah. candy. Well, I feel like, I feel like what, what these gentlemen are saying. I feel like the, the acidity oh, was, it was a little higher. That it would maybe cut down on the uh, on the uh, residual sugar. Yep. That they're tasting. I think I think Lowell's initial reaction and what Eric just uh, wrapped up on is exactly right. I, I actually think this is showing extremely poor. Um, I think this wine completely lacks any acidity whatsoever. And so in a weird way, no joke, this really tastes like sugar water to me. I mean, if you've been poor and you can't buy Kool-Aid and you put ice water and you put sugar in it, this is what it tastes like. I mean, this is, quote unquote, right down the line sugar water. As a matter of fact, it loses, I mean, there's like a little bit like a little bit left of the peach juice that you sometimes mm -hmm. get. Mm -hmm. But honestly, if you took like a peach and like squeeze one little drop and the rest was sugar and water, <laughs> that's what this would taste like. I am baffled at best by the lack of the acidity on this wine. And this wine is really disappointing. Like really disappointing on my palate. Though its sweetness and its easy drinking factor is gonna let it get away with it kind of, I think this wine is terrible. I'm gonna score this wine at 71. Um, and the only reason it even got into the 70s was at some level we all have sweet tea and you know, a little sugar didn't hurt but, us. But I mean, that's as a wine. Do you think that we could repackage this and sell this as a child's beverage? As or a child's beverage. <laughs> not in America. <laughs> not in America. <laughs> not in America. I'm not sure if this could even go with Brie. I mean, I think this is so lacking a backbone. It's, it's a jellyfish wine. Really I mean, it just, it's got nothing. So to me, it was some of cider. It's like cider. It, it tastes like cider. Absolutely. It's the same stuff on the label. Yeah, so I mean, drinking there's, there's, there's one. Yeah. Champagne. And I'm pretty disappointed. Yeah. I was pretty darn amped for this wine. And I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm very, very upset. On the flip side, the big takeaway for me today for sure is I need to start exploring under $15 Italian wine just a little bit more. I mean, I drink a lot of dolcetto. And I think that that is something that's massively underrated. Barbera's a great, but there's more exploring. I mean, Aglianico, the Aglianico I thought was very interesting tonight. And at 12 bones, I might have even been a little hard on it. Could even, could have been elevated. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Awesome, thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. Question of the day. I want you to predict how many touchdowns Mark Sanchez will throw this year. <laughs> I'm thinking 40. Yeah! <laughs> My brother. With a little bit of me. We are changing the wine world.